Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. A warm welcome to you to our online service of worship. This week in Trinity 10, I am in St Hugh's Church in Langworth. We come this morning together to worship together and we're going to be thinking about uh, the story of Peter walking on water. Shall we begin our time together with the collect for this week? Shall we pray? Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? 
He answered, I've been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of apel Melaha, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have now not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! 
and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. And when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall we pray? Lord God, we pray that we might hear afresh from you this morning. Amen. Well, today brings two of my favourite passages in the Bible together. In both, we hear accounts of God's glory. And I love, what I love is that Elijah and Peter encounter God in unexpected ways. And because of that encounter, their faith deepens. For a moment, think back over your own faith journey. I wonder if you can pinpoint those key moments that saw a deepening of your faith. Those moments when something shifted from your head to your heart. Very simply, this morning, I want to pick out three things that an encounter with God involves. Obedience, vulnerability, and connection. Firstly, obedience. Both Elijah and Peter hear a word from God. To Elijah, go and stand on the mountain. To Peter, come. It takes a step of faith for both men to do as they are asked. Peter, on seeing Jesus, needs some reassurance and asks, If it's you, command me to come to you on the water. I wonder why Peter doesn't jump overboard straight in. Matthew, I think, includes this detail of, of him asking Jesus, to show us that this encounter is not just about risk-taking, but it's primarily about obedience. God doesn't require us to leap blindly into the unknown, but he does want our yes. Our Christian journey as individuals and corporately is about us growing in faith to recognise the voice of God and being obedient and responsive to his call. Put yourself in Peter's place for a moment. What would you choose, the water or the boat? The boat is safe, secure and comfortable. On the other hand, the water is rough, the waves are high and the wind is strong. For each of us, whatever age or stage of faith we are at, God has a plan, a purpose and a dream for us. If you get out of the boat, whatever your boat might happen to be, there's a good chance you might sink. But if you don't get out of the boat, there's a guaranteed certainty that you will never walk on the water. Ultimately, if you want to walk on the water, you've got to get out of the boat. Elijah is far from any physical boats. He's in the desert running for his life. Exhausted and suicidal, he's been fed and protected so far by Yahweh. And now God asks him to come and stand before him. What a choice. If he stays in the cave, he's hidden and relatively safe. Yet can he risk standing out in the open where Jezebel's soldiers may see him and standing before Almighty God in the messed up physical and mental state that he is in. But Elijah steps out of his boat. He longs for that encounter with God, and as he covers his face, the glory of God passes by. God is not in the great wind, nor in the fire. Instead, he's in the silence and the small whisper. Encounter involves obedience. 
Secondly, an encounter calls for vulnerability. Out walking on the water, Peter saw the wind and reality sets in. He asks himself, what was I thinking? And Jesus speaks to Peter and asks why he doubts. I've heard, as you might have, preachers use this passage to show that Peter failed because of a lack of faith. But does he fail? I suppose, in a way, he did. On this occasion, his doubts were stronger than his faith. But I'd also argue that there were 11 bigger failures sitting in the boat. They failed quietly and privately. Their failure went unnoticed and unobserved. Only Peter knew the infamy of making himself vulnerable and then failing in public. But because of that, only Peter knew two other things as well. Only Peter knew the glory of walking on the water. He alone knew what it was to attempt to do something he was not capable of doing on his own, to allow himself to be vulnerable and then experience the euphoria of being empowered by God to actually do it. I imagine once you walk on water, you never forget it, not for the rest of your life. I imagine Peter carried that joyous moment with him to his grave. And only Peter knew the glory of being lifted up by Jesus in a moment of desperate need. Peter knew in a way that the others could not, that when he sank, in this case literally, Jesus would be totally sufficient to save him. For Elijah, he's in a state of vulnerability, physically and mentally hiding in a cave. Yet as he steps out of the cave to encounter the Lord, he finds strength and reassurance, enough to see him not only continue on his journey, but in the following chapter to take on the role of mentor to Elisha. Despite feeling like a nobody, he allows himself to be vulnerable before God and his encounter with God moves his life forward. Brené Brown puts it like this. You can't get to courage without walking through vulnerability. Encounter involves obedience and it involves vulnerability. Finally, encounter requires connection. I 100% believe that God is alive today and that he still speaks to his people. There have been times in my life when I have known beyond a shadow of a doubt the presence, the love and the power of God. And those encounters change you. Peter was changed because he had gotten out of the boat. He'd shared a moment, a shared connection, a shared trust in Jesus that none of the others had. They couldn't because they didn't get out of the boat. Elijah saw the glory of God pass before him. Only a handful of people in scripture are recorded as having seen God face to face. And Elijah was one of them. He stood with all his vulnerability and he heard the whisper of affirmation from God. Today, whether we feel bold like Peter or weak like Elijah, God longs for an encounter with each of us. It's easy for us as Christians to get comfortable and dare I say it may be complacent in our faith. But we're called into a personal relationship that allows us to connect on a deep level with God. Just like Elijah and Peter, God uses real-world challenges to develop our ability to trust in him. The call to encounter may involve crisis or vulnerability, fear and sometimes suffering. Often the call to get out of the boat feels like a task that is too big for us. But it's the way that we grow in our faith. Encounter involves obedience, vulnerability and connection. Jesus is still looking for people who will get out of the boat.
He's looking for people and communities of followers who want to encounter his presence. When we seek God, when we listen and obey his voice, when we make ourselves vulnerable, allowing ourselves to be changed by him, I believe two things will happen. The first is that when you wobble, and you will sometimes wobble, Jesus will be there to pick you up. You will find that he is still totally sufficient to save. And the other thing is that every once in a while, you will walk on water. Amen. Shall we pray? Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence with us this morning. We thank you that you call us, God, out of the boat to a life of adventure with you. Pray for each of us that in this week we would encounter again your power, your love and your presence. And may we be transformed by it. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Before we come to a time of prayer, I'm going to invite you to listen to a song which might be new for many of you. It might be a song that you have heard. It's called Oceans, and it speaks of that stepping out of that faith in God.
Let us pray. Faithful God, we pray for the gift of deeper faith in you, so that we trust you in a way that alters our dependence on everything else and allows us a clearer vision as to the direction and role of your church. Remind us that it is your church and not ours, your work, your power and your kingdom. We pray for Christians throughout the world as they meet to worship you and particularly pray for all people who are persecuted because of their Christian faith. We ask for your blessing on the clergy in our benefice and for Bishops David, Nicholas and Stephen as they face the challenges before them. Strengthen and encourage them in all they do in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we call to mind those parts of the world where there is war, random violence, or only fragile peace. Give to those who are trying to make peace an inner certainty of their calling and constant patience in their negotiations. May all who struggle know that you are always with them in their suffering and will walk beside them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
faithful God, you created a wonderful world, but the world has chosen to go its own way. We pray for the parts of the world which are suffering from global warming, those suffering extreme heat and wildfires, and those suffering from floods. And this morning we pray particularly for the people of Hawaii who have suffered terrible wildfires. Lord, grant us the wisdom to care for the earth. Help us to act now for the good of future generations and all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we pray for the spiritual health and welfare of our communities. We pray that as a church family, people are welcomed and nourished. We pray also for our village communities of which we are a part, that you would make it a place where all can flourish, the weak be cared for, and for where there is harmony and a true civic pride. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we pray for those who are going through times of trouble, some perhaps in our families, some in our church, some in our wider circle of friends. We pray for those in hospital, in care homes, those receiving treatment and those awaiting test results. We pray for the lonely, the bereaved and the distressed who dread getting up each morning. We know you to be both Lord and healer of your broken world and we ask you to touch with your generous love all those who are on our hearts today because of their special need. And in a moment's silence we name on our hearts those we know who need a touch from you this morning. May your love flood their lives with hope and healing in spirit, mind and body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, into your hands we commit those who have the, run the race and kept the faith, even if that faith was known only to you, and now have gone to their reward. May your light shine upon them forever, and our lives be richer because of their memory. We pray for those who have lost loved ones recently, or at this time of year, and we ask you to provide them with strength and comfort in their grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, as we go out into the world, we pray that we may reflect your love in our families, our church and our community, so that the world will witness that we are followers of Christ and others will be drawn into his loving care. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
final blessing as we go. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you, everyone you love and everyone you pray for, this day and always. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us this week. We will be back next week in person at Fiskerton and Sudbrook, and we'll be back online as well. Have a great week. Hopefully the sunshine will stay, and we'll see lots of you soon. Take care. Bye. <laughs>